The elected officials here today have a solemn duty to represent the people of Oklahoma, their constituents, and to work to make this state a better place to live, work, invest, and raise the family. I know all of us, Republicans and Democrats alike, take that responsibility very seriously. I want to thank you for your hard work and thank you for your service to the state of Oklahoma. Because of the actions taken by this legislature and, of course, because of the hardworking, innovative, resilient people of the state of our state, our state of our state is strong. And everyone here today should be very proud of all that we have accomplished. Together we have overcome adversity. In 2011, the American dream in Oklahoma was threatened. Middle class families and small businesses were hit hard by the national recession. And it seemed possible, even likely, that we would leave our children a less prosperous state than the one we inherited. Our unemployment rate stood at 7.2%, leaving tens of thousands of Oklahomans out of work. The state faced a budget shortfall of $500 million. And just like the bank accounts of many Oklahoma families, our state savings account had dried up. In fact, our state was broke. We only had $2.03 in our rainy day savings account. So we responded. This legislature acted quickly and decisively, passing a series of measures to help jumpstart the economy, help our working families, and realign our spending with our physical response, or with our physical realities of our state. We balanced the budget the old fashioned way, we prioritized our spending, and when necessary, made tough cuts, just like those that are being made by Oklahoma families. We also eliminated red tape and bureaucracy choking small businesses. We improved government services and we eliminated waste. We retooled our state agencies, consolidating duplicate boards and commissions. And we made government run more like a business, effective, efficient, and customer friendly. We passed comprehensive legal reform minimizing frivolous lawsuits and creating an atmosphere more conducive to job growth and job retention. And we were finally able to overhaul our workers' compensation system, moving from a contentious legal process to a more efficient administrative structure, a goal we had worked on for decades, and today the new Workers' Compensation Commission is open for business. standards they need to produce students who are college, career, and citizen ready. We've also shown compassion and care for those who have served our country and those that have faced unique challenges. We offered a hand up, not just a hand out. We have worked with the legislature to increase oversight over our Department of Veterans Affairs and tasked our new board with investigating and eliminating instances of abuse and, eject, and, and neglect of our state's veterans and their facilities. And so I want to thank the legislature for taking care of our veterans this past year. Thank you very, very much. Plan, a comprehensive strategy to better protect and serve the children in state custody and to place them in loving foster families. And we've offered increased resources to programs assisting those suffering from mental health issues, including drug abuse and addiction, helping people get the treatment they need 
to rejoin their families and their communities as productive, happy members of society. For nonviolent offenders in our prison population, we're working hard to offer treatment and rehabilitation so we can be smart on crime as we are tough on crime. So I'm looking forward to a renewed partnership between the Department of Corrections, this legislature, my office, as we work with the agency and our new director to evaluate and improve our Smart on Crime initiatives, including the Justice Reinvestment Act. These actions, along with the priorities I will outline today, are aimed at improving the quality of life, creating jobs, and building a more prosperous state. Now we know we're on the right track because the policies we've implemented over the last three years are working. Oklahomans are getting back to work and they're earning more. That 7.2% unemployment rate is now down to 5.4%. have seen their income rise by 6.3% since January of 2011. That's 44% higher than the national average and second only to North Dakota. And by the way, I'm not ready to concede bragging rights to North Dakota because they wouldn't be number one in the nation if it weren't for an Oklahoma company and other Oklahoma companies, but in particular Continental Oil who has helped uh, lead the way in the energy revolution and their work in the Balkan shell. That's why North Dakota's number one and we're number two, but I'm not going to concede to that. <laughs> the fiscal House is once again in order. Our rainy day savings account has grown from pocket change to over $570 million. It stands today at $530 million because this legislature wisely and compassionately appropriated funds for tornado recovery and reconstruction after last year's storms. With over a half a billion dollars remaining in that account, Oklahoma does have a real safety net should we ever face another natural disaster or economic crisis. Today, Oklahoma is a top 10 state for net migration, meaning people and businesses and jobs from around the country are moving to Oklahoma. Today, we have achieved great success in the face of considerable challenges. I'm proud of the way Oklahoma responded to unexpected challenges, sometimes even hardships. And of course, we saw our share of that last year. There was no greater challenge or hardship than the one we experienced last May when a series of tornadoes swept across Oklahoma. The loss of life, especially the loss of children, was devastating. I will never forget the unbearable grief when I met with the mothers and fathers who lost a child, or even the scream of a woman who had just found out that her husband was killed. And we must all keep them in our continued prayers. I will also never forget the brave and compassionate actions of so many of our citizens, men and women, taking complete strangers into their homes and offering them a place to sleep or in some, a warm meal. Oklahoma's, and even people from across the United States dropping everything to volunteer their time and offer the resources to help in the recovery effort. And I can still remember walking through the rubble at Plaza Towers Elementary School with the first responders who worked desperately through the night, risking their own safety to clear the rubble, to cut through the concrete in hopes of uncovering just one more survivor. And some of those first responders are here today, and I want to recognize them for their hard work, their bravery, and their service to the state. 
So will you please join me in applauding them for their work, applauding all the first responders and volunteers who helped last May and will continue to help us in a time of crisis. Will our first responders please stand up?